So uh, Frankski and I have been friends for how many years now, man? Man, long time. <laughs> yeah. Over 20. Did you and I start almost in the same year? I think so. You over at V, me yeah. here on the yep. little Lady Bitty radio station. Yep. So yeah. Frank yeah. was the one kicking your ass in the very beginning. Oh, it's 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and it and then things cool. shifted. <laughs> <laughs> I never even had my... I'm like, we will never, yeah. ever get close to beating that dude. So that was oh, never man. even the wish, man. But uh, it's been a beautiful friendship over the years yeah. here. And... Um, Look, I, I extended an invitation to you a couple of days ago. This syndication game is stupid, man. And Frank has been a legend in Atlanta for the longest time. And I don't know the politics behind V103 and everything else that's going on, but he doesn't have a voice on the radio in Atlanta right now, which to me is the most ridiculous thing ever. They should yeah. replace us with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. Wait, don't wait, say wait, that. I, I don't know, I don't know if I want this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I extended an invitation to him a couple of days ago uh, with what has happened in Atlanta. Mm. Atlanta has lost an icon, a radio legend and a radio icon, which was Frank's partner and friend for years and years and years and i said if there's anything that you want to say on the radio you have an open mic in here always yeah thank you man i appreciate it yeah losing wanda smith was um it, it was difficult it, it was very difficult I've, I've had actually uh a very difficult year like god has really been testing you know for all my spiritual people i i lost mm -hmm. my son in may i'm so sorry and oh, thank you that, and um after a, a long flight a uh, long fight rather with uh, liver failure, I lost my son, and we went into Baltimore to do his home-going service on Sunday. And Tuesday, my wife gave birth to a new baby boy. Wow. So at one time, you're trying to mourn, you know, and take time out, but then now you have something else that you have to be happy for. And it's just mm. been like a roller coaster year. How do you juggle all those the emotions of that? It, it, it's been a roller coaster year. A few weeks ago, we lost uh, a good friend of mine, Brian Davis, who was the uh, CEO of the George Aquarium, big sponsor of my kids' foundation. And we had been around the world together, and you know, we were just talking like a few days before he passed. And he was talking. I sent him a picture that came up on my timeline uh, of him and I on the back of a boat scuba diving in hawaii with the kids and we were talking about that and then just a few days later i get the call and it's like mm. just as you're getting over one thing there's another one and and a lot of people i don't know what it's been but of course we know we've lost a lot of celebrities a lot of people over the past <clears throat> year i don't know if it's because we're getting older or whatever but i never expected to get the call about wanda mm -hmm. it, it was very interesting last year i um i was rekindling my relationship with her and at, at the advice of my wife, my wife was like, you know what? You should call Wanda. And it's funny about having women in your life because they're so intuitive with things, right? Absolutely. They will say things to you and you'll be like, wow, right? And she was like, you should talk to Wanda. Did she mm -hmm. have any reasoning why she felt the need to say that to you? You know, we were talking. We were going through a transition at the station I was on at the time. Um, and I was going to put a search out and get uh, a new co-host. And she was like you need to talk to Wanda. And I was like, really? You think so? Whatever. She was like, yeah. And I haven't talked to her in a little bit. It's just been a little while. Um, so I picked up the phone and called her. And it was like, wow. It was like one of those moments. Mm -hmm. Like crying, I love you, the whole nine yards. And I said, you know what? You should come in and talk to the, to the management. She was like, okay, cool. And she came in, talked to everybody, and went on a cruise for her high school reunion down in Florida. And got sick on the cruise. And she was in Miami Jackson Hospital for a while, came back to Atlanta. They got her together. <clears throat> and then she went back in again for another procedure. And then things just went downhill. Oh, man. man. And she didn't want anybody to know about it. She this. didn't want anybody to know. Uh, Ricky Smiley, the comedian, other people had called me about uh, doing a fundraiser because people had found out she was in the hospital. And she was like, no, she didn't, she didn't want to do it. And then I get the call that she – I never thought I would get that call. And here's the crazy part about the, the roller coaster ride. So I'm at my house on Saturday in the backyard with the pastor, the church pastor, family, and close friends doing the christening of my son. After the christening of my son and the prayer, I get the call that Wanda passed. Oh. Wow. 
Man, you talk about being tested. You are right. right? It's like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Frank, for those that may not be familiar, how did you and Wanda start here in Atlanta? You know, it, it, it again, again, another one of them, them God things. I, I, I was in Baltimore, and we uh, had a station in Baltimore, <clears throat> V103 in Baltimore, and there was a V103 here in Atlanta. And they would take me from nights doing the night show, and they were like, we want you to do the morning show. And I was like, why? <laughs> like, doing the night show, I'm having fun, I'm doing clubs, I'm yeah. making records. Sleeping in. Yeah. Sleeping in. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, we want you to do... Do the morning show. But before we do that, we want you to go to Atlanta and sit in with Mike Roberts. And I said, why not? And I went in and just to observe his show. And then one of the nights we went out to a comedy club and I saw Wanda on stage. And I was like, wow, if I ever did a show here, that's who I would want. And then two years later, Mike Roberts announces his retirement. <clears throat> and when they announced his retirement, they asked me to come in um, from Baltimore, and I accepted the job. And they said, you know, there's a woman here. Her name is Wanda. And I said, Wanda? And I said, does she look like this? And they were like, yeah. I said, absolutely. <laughs> and and I, I was already bringing a comedian with me on the show. And I just made that comedian, because he was a big sports guy, Kind of like comedian and sports, and then had Wanda, and it made for a great show. It was like it was and meant to be. It was. Mm. It was like meant to be. What is uh one of your if you can? Because I know you guys worked together for quite some time and made just a tremendous amount of memories over the years on air together. Do you yeah. have a favorite on air memory with her? Um, there were. I mean, she was just a jokester. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was a prankster. I mean, you know, every I don't know who the prankster is on this show, but everybody's got one. Tommy, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Everybody's everybody's like the prankster, right? And and Wanda was that prankster. And I remember in Atlanta one time we have several, but I remember um, uh, Gucci Mane mm. had gotten arrested and went to jail, and Wanda was like, "I got connections. I'm going to get Gucci out of jail." And for like a week, we were like free Gucci on the radio. I, I didn't even know why he was in jail, right? But like free Gucci. And so, and he was like, Wanda was like, I think we got it done. I called the governor, the mayor. He's gonna come out. They're gonna they're gonna release him until the trial. Gucci's coming home. Matter of fact, he's coming today on the show. So the whole show. And Nina, which was our assistant producer, was like Gucci crazy. And she had, like, the biggest star crush in the whole night. She's nervous. She's in tears. Like, Gucci Mane is coming, right? <laughs> so Wanda was like, I'm going to the lobby to get him. And we're on the air. And then she was like, as soon as I come back, you know, play his music. So I'm playing Gucci music. It's a party. We got a cake. Like, Gucci Mane's coming <laughs> home. There's posters in the studio. And Gucci was coming on the Frank Ski show with Wanda Smith straight out of jail. And Wanda comes around the corner. With a life size cutout. Nah. <laughs> with a jail suit, with the Ards jail suit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everybody were, just, everybody fell out. That's an elaborate prank. I thought you were going to say, like, she came in with some Gucci bags and it was free Gucci for everybody in studio. <laughs> no, no, no. That's my kind of prank. Right? <laughs> no. But she was just crazy. She would yeah. say things to people. That, you know, only a comedian can mm -hmm. get away with, you know, and, and she had just that kind of heart. I remember we had one day we had um, OJ, um, Alex Gidwan had brought OJ mm. for a party. And and I, I said, I got a special guest. and I didn't want to tell anybody in case he didn't show up. And he came around the corner and it's like OJ. And Wanda, like, cusses on the air. Oh, S word. <laughs> <laughs> it's OJ. Like, yeah, she's just funny like that, yeah. you know. Uh, but the biggest thing about Wanda is she had this ability to connect with people on a level that I've always aspired to be able to do. She was able to connect with people like she never allowed who she was or her position to take her out of being on the level with regular people. And So she talked to them, not down to them. And it's, it's so hard when, when, you're the, when you're on a show like this 
because in the back of your mind, you're thinking about 50 things that's happening at the same time, mm. right? Mm. So I'm thinking about everything from security to this to that <laughs> to making sure things are right, whatever, and people looking at you, talking to you, and you're trying to break out of one mode to talk to people. But she would walk in and never care about anything else. It was just about the people that came out um, when when 9-11 happened, when we wanted to raise money for the firefighters in New York. She said, you know, we're going to. We're going to stay on the air for 24 hours. We're going to get a camper because the flights, no flights. Mm-hmm. And we were out at the old Brave Stadium on the parking lot, and we had a camper. We raised all this money, and we were going to drive the camper from Atlanta to New York to drop off the money. And as it turns out, uh, Mayor Bill Campbell at the time was like, no, 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 I'm going to get a flight in. And we took the first flight in to drop off the money. When Katrina happened, we were outside of – Club 112, the same thing. And she was like, no, we're not just going to give the money. We're going we're gonna to take all this stuff here. It was like three tractor trailer loads of stuff. And Orlando from Atlanta Peach Movers like gave me the trucks. And he was like, just pay the drivers and the gas. And, and we did and drove this. Like she was that. And when, mm-hmm. when disasters happen, she wouldn't want to, you know, they bring canned goods, bring this. She's like, no, 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 no. Diapers. Mm-hmm. Mm. I was like, for what? And I got kids. <laughs> yeah. She's like, diapers. Like, feminine products. Mm-hmm. I was like, for what? She said, everybody's giving canned goods. Everybody's giving food. But moms need diapers mm-hmm. and female products. Yep. And when we did the diaper drive, it was like, holy cow. Like, mm-hmm. the amount of people. Like, she just connected to people on a different level. We had a guy who was with the Innocence Project um, one of the first people that they had gotten out, he had been in jail like 30 years, wrongly convicted. He was real, a lot older now, had missed out on everything, right? And, and it was like, what do you get somebody like that? He came in on the show straight when they got him out. He came on the show, and Wanda was like, call Carabas, shut the restaurant down, called all of his family, and had all of his family come in from everywhere. And do a welcome home dinner. Wow. Like nobody would think about yeah. the simplest things, you that, know? That can mean the most. That would mean the most to somebody. She sound, she was a force of nature is what it sounds like. Yeah, and it was like really, it was really weird how she was able to connect. We would do like during Christmas, you know, Christmas wish giveaway stuff. And Wanda would, she would, she would interview the families that we would pick. And she would actually go out and buy the stuff herself. <laughs> She knew what each kid really needed and wanted and what the parents needed and wanted. We had a guy who another guy was in jail and he got out and um, he had missed his daughter's like 10. And she, you know, didn't want to have anything to do with him because he'd been in jail all this time and got them to reconcile on the air. And then out of nowhere, got another celebrity to donate a family trip for them to go to Disney World. Mm-hmm. And that's her. Yeah, and this is, <clears throat> you know, when you're listening to the radio and you hear a lot of the jokes and a lot of the pranks, sometimes you don't see the heart behind the personalities. Yeah. And that's why she, it sounds like that's all she was, was heart, man. So let me let me just tell you this, this one that was probably our biggest thing real quick. So we're on the air, and like any other time, we get calls from people needing stuff. And so, and I'm on the air, so I'm Hubert, mm-hmm. right? So I don't have time to take those calls. But she would be on the phone with these people. I'd be like, Wanda, <laughs> pay attention. I'm doing a show. We got a show. She was like, pick this, pick this call up. I was like, what? Pick this call up. I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, okay, we can, okay, I picked the call up. And it's this woman who moved as a younger woman who moved with her autistic son from Philadelphia, had enough money for the bus ticket. And the place they lived in and had a little bit of food, they moved because they were just trying to get away from everything in Philly and where she was living and what was going on, moved into a really small little place here. And it wasn't in the best part of town. She was crying because her son and her were were locked in their house because there was a rat terrorizing them. A rat. Now, I grew up in South Florida. I'm the animal whisperer, and I'm like, a rat? Like, come on. Like, give me a broom. Let me go take care of this, right? <laughs> She's like, no, it's the rat, and, it, and, it, and it's outside, 
and we're locked in. We can't get because everywhere we go, this rat would like jump on us and jump on my son. And what I was like, there's no way. Like, I've never heard of anything like that. Wanda was like, you need to go right now (laughs) on the air. (laughs) Now, if I don't go, I seem like the, you know, like like I don't care. Right. I was like, I'll go right after the show. She was like, no, you need to go right now. (laughs) It's like 730. We got till 10 a.m. to do the show. I was like, damn. So I get my little assistant in the studio, Jay, and I'm like, come on, we're going to go to this lady's house. (laughs) So we pull up in front of the lady's house. Everything is on the air. I'm like calling her from the phone, call the woman, and she's like, "Um, we we got the rat trapped in the bedroom. And she opens the front door, and she said, the rat's in the bedroom. I was like, okay, Wanda, here I am. I'm at the house, and there's this rat. And I walk to the door. She's like, be careful. And I open her bedroom door, and in the window seal, it looked like a cat. I was a New York City rat. It was huge. <laughs> and was, the it, cat, was, it a, was it a rat? It was a rat. It looked like it was sitting. It looked like it was the size of a possum. Yeah. Oh. I know exactly gray, what you're talking about. Took the Greyhound down from New York. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and here's the thing. It was sitting in the window going like this. <sighs> oh, no. Oh. And you could see the stomach going in and out. <laughs> and I was like. This is a rabbit rat. Like, it's got rabies. Yeah. yeah. This is crazy. Because whether it's a rat, a raccoon, a squirrel, if they get rabies, they become very aggressive yeah. and will attack you. And I'm like, holy cow. So I close the door. That broom and ain't going to work. Wanda, yeah. yeah, the room ain't going to work. <laughs> and I said, let me get on the phone and call some people. There's a guy calls in the radio station. <laughs> I'm so and so and so and so from South Georgia. I've dealt with everything. I'm going to come down there and I'll get that rat out that house for you. Where, where are you at? And I'm giving the man an address. This is all on the air. The guy gets there with his truck, and it's got, like, all kinds of stuff on the outside mm-hmm. of it. He catches everything. And he comes, where's this rat? You know, his pants hanging down. Like, <laughs> Anyway, so he comes in there. He opens the door, and he's like, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. He closes the door. He said, no, nah, this ain't going to work. <laughs> he had like a net, right? He had like a net, like he's a fisherman. I was like, that's not going to work. He goes to his car and gets a gun. <gasps> oh, wow. Well, no, you all up. did it. Yes. And, he, and he's like, don't <laughs> worry. He changes out, puts pellets in the gun, and he opens the door, and he's like, step back. Y'all stay over there in case he jumps out. <laughs> and all you hear is, boop, 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 boop. And you hear this thing, ah, ah. It's like screaming and whatever. Live and on fight. air. The whole thing live on air. Live on the radio. <laughs> oh my God. And he puts it in a bag and he ca- it's very proudly. He's like, I told you I'd get everything. <laughs> and he takes this rat out, right? <laughs> and, and now it's like 1130. Uh-huh. We're into the next show. Uh-huh. And, and Wanda was like, it's not going to end there. So we get off the air and she's like, we got to help her. I was like, what do you mean we got to help her? She has nothing. I said, so what do you want to do? She doesn't have a washer, a dryer. Her refrigerator's broken. Wanda went out and got a washer, a dryer, a refrigerator, food, clothes for the kids, new beds, everything. And then so much money was raised. And again, this is me. I'm like, we're not giving this woman all this money. No, no. We're not just going to. Put all this money on her and hope she's going to manage it right. To, to, to rat lady, who I'm, mm-hmm. I guess, and that's yes. What, 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 what? Everybody calls the rat lady, yeah. <laughs> and we set up an account, and the bank sent her a little bit every oh. month. Hmm. Oh. oh wow! Every month, that woman hit us up like four years later. She went to college, graduated from college, mm. has her own place, wow. doing well. And when we did our our last show on the air together, she came. Wow. Mm. That's Atlanta. That's mm. awesome. Yeah. And that's Wanda. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, man. Awesome, man. Thank you. That's, uh, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, sorry for your losses. Sorry Thank for you. this latest loss, man. Um, I know that you lean on your spirituality and God, and I'm sure you yeah. are now, but I, yeah. even on times like this, you got a question, huh? Yeah. I, I question, you know, all the time. It's like really difficult, you know. And when we were at the christening, I flew my mom in, and she's like, you know, the, the, the evil side of the world is coming at you, which means something better is coming. Absolutely. You just got to hold on. You know, the enemy's coming at you and you're being tested, but it's during this test 
that the best is going to come out of you. And, you know, as you get older, you know, when you have kids and now I've got younger kids, now it's like, how do I stay around longer? Mm -hmm. So I'm eating better, losing weight, like trying to figure out how to stay around longer. But as we get older, we start to think to ourselves, what happens if something happens Mm -hmm. to me? Mm. You know, and I've never thought like that in my life. And now losing people... Especially so young, because like Wanda sad, was young. Wanda mm-hmm. was young. It's like a sad place, you know, where you where you have to think and make sure that your stuff is together. You've got everything done right. You've got life insurance. You've got this just in case because nobody ever nobody ever thinks about that. No, nah, it's precious, man. I know it's yeah. a cliche, but life is precious. Life is precious. You know what? Yeah. I mean, just, and just, what, you, what you've done with, with kids, Bert, I mean, you've seen it. I've seen you post, like... You get to know these kids, and sometimes when they pass away, it's a tough, oh, yeah. it's a tough thing because the parents put so much in. And and Sunday, um, or rather yesterday, uh, I had a eight eight year old nephew lives here in Atlanta, and um, he was on the playground and suffered a heart attack and died Shh, at eight. At eight, yeah. my God, at eight years old. Oh, I'm so sorry. Eight years old to see to be in there yesterday and to look up on stage and see his mom mm. and knowing that kid. Stayed at my house all the time. And he has a 10-year-old brother. Mm-hmm. So his brother's been at my house. Just to, you know, now now the mom is like, she doesn't want to move anything in the room. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want to take anything sure. out of the room. You know, but her, him and his brother shared a room together. So how does that, like, it's just things. Like, you never, you never think about how life can twist and turn. And you just have to value people and friends. And I'm so glad that I reconnected with Wanda. Mm-hmm. You know, because I would have felt bad. Mm. If this would have happened, and I would have never reconnected with her and tried, it would, I would have felt really bad. A lot of life lessons here. Mm-hmm. Lots of love for you, Frank Ski. Thank you, man. All appreciate right, man. it. Love you, man. Love you guys. Thank you. Yes, Thanks sir. for coming. The Bird Show.